welterweight championship fight of the highest order between George St. Pierre and Kamaru Usman. Even dating to his time on the Ultimate Fighter DC back in 2015, you got the sense very early on that Kamar Usman could be something special as he has always put it. I'm a problem, he's a champion, he's a real problem. Yes, he is a problem because he has a basic pressure that most guys can't handle. We saw it in the RDA fight, we saw it in the Woodley fight, and because his wrestling is so smothering, as he showed in the Marais fight, his striking opportunities opened themselves up. Kamaru Usman, as you say, J.A., is a real problem for anybody at Marais Center. And he's a loyalist. He has been true to his coaches, and we love Greg Jones and everybody else. Kamaru Usman has realized the dream, and he'll try to take it to the next level here tonight. He is the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC welterweight champion of the world, and in a division that has so much depth in that top 15, it's even more remarkable that this man has remained the hunted. The question tonight, with a powerful challenger out of that blue corner, can he walk away and still? Get you our tail of the tape for this welterweight championship fight. George St. Pierre is six years his senior. Same numbers on reach. Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Dan Bergliata. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, it's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC welterweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of 19 wins, one loss. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Boca Raton, Florida, presenting the challenger, Kamaru, the Nigerian Nightmare, Usman. And now introducing the champion, Fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, only a professional record of 26 wins, two losses. He stands five feet ten inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending UFC welterweight champion of the world, George. You've been with your hands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. On a nice, clean, safe fight. Touch gloves, come back to your corners, come out for The fighters touch gloves. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's fight. So here we go. Round one is underway. Very compelling matchup for fight fans around the world. It's going to be very interesting to see. Oh, and he hip tosses him to the mat. Now we'll see what he can do from here, DC. Right into side control. He's going to try to control him, then find a submission. All right, close guard now. You got to be careful, though. He's got a lot of submissions off his back. Crazy accuracy and efficiency with these ground and pound strikes here. And if you're the opponent, you got to intelligently defend, or the referee's going to stop him. Guys, but you can see him now start the game posture and the intensity that's 
which he's throwing these ground strikes, it started to improve. It started to elevate because he knows that he can get the finish. Outstanding ground and pound here. Somewhat of a lost art in MMA, at least in terms of making sure that every strike counts. Not an issue for him. He's making every single one of them count. He is not pity pad. He's not touching. Every punch that lands, he wants you to feel it. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Continues to apply pressure here at half guard. Side control now. Oh, lands with the ground and pound strike. All right, DC, half guard position here. You've done a lot of good work in this spot in your career. Oh, man, I love this position. And you see this fighter today loves it, too. It is the most secure position in fighting. You get an underhook on one side, you keep a half guard on the other, and then you just go to work. It's the safest position, especially for a wrestler. All right, side control now. We'll see if he can advance position. Just over two minutes to go in the round. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Working out of the half guard here. Usman's back in full mount. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you gotta be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. Now he's on top of him looking for a finish. Back mount now. Usman's right back to the full mount here. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Oh, useful strike on the ground that was. All right, good movement by him here on the ground. He really is a master of these transitions. He is a master of movement on the ground. You never know where he's gonna be. Usman's looking to pass here, denied by the opponent. He's having his way with him here. Final seconds here. Well, you see all the grappling repetitions here. Just beautiful movement, seamless transitions on the game. Over and over, these guys are doing things that you see in every jiu-jitsu gym around the country. All right, now we take a look back at some of the action in that previous round, DC. A lot to like on both sides, really. I mean, both were intent on going forward. And what happens when nobody wants to take a step back? They meet in the middle. That's exactly what they did, and they both found success over the course of that round. All right, here we go with our next round, and really shades of the Diaz brothers in that previous round. A lot of volume, a lot of accuracy, just a lot of efficiency on the field. Very, very efficient. Good round in the sense that he did not throw everything with absolute power, but he was touching the entire time. Then every now and again, he was set down for a strike that was really damaging. Mixes it up nicely in terms of staying heavy and also staying active. Stuffs the tape, tosses him down. Now we'll see if he can advance position. I mean, right into side control. Oh, that'll work. The ground and pound strike is good. Keep it busy here off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. Oh, how about the speed on that reversal there? I mean, I know you can get out of some bad spots, but not with that type of speed. You cannot allow him to get leverage on the bottom. What a sweep. All right, we'll see if he postures up and can get some of his ground strikes going here. Now, the guy's attacking the triangle. He finds himself in trouble because he got a little bit lazy in the full guard. Looks like he's trying to manipulate the head. This could be tight. up there, gained some valuable separation. And now, the ground and pound starts. Well, you gotta stay busy on the bottom. He's doing it here, nice punch. Man, how fun is this to watch as he continues to dole out damage with the ground and pound? Take it back to the days of guys like Mark Coleman, just beating people up in the ground and pound. This guy is a throwback fighter, he's very fun to watch. Yeah, the godfather would be proud. 
All right, he's got side control here, DC. You know, he's got a lot of different submissions in his arsenal once this fight gets to the ground. Back to the feet now. So he's really starting to put together some significant body shots here. These are gonna take their toll as this fight goes on. Great punch landed with so much power. Back to the leg kick now. That one's no good. Oh, is that a big knee to the body? We'll see if he can follow up. Oh! Usman's strike attempt there is blocked. Immediately gets the underhook. Oh, he eats the knee there. That does not taste good. A lot of different... Oh, that was a big takedown. Is this the one that's going to break him? In a very close run, a takedown like that might be the difference. All right, so we now look back at some of the action from that previous round, DC. A lot of good highlights on both sides. I mean, a lot of good highlights from both competitors. They both should be very proud of what they accomplished. But I'm telling you, man, I'm not sure they can keep this up. If they land at this clip for another five minutes, somebody's going to sleep. Are you ready? You ready? Let's go, Here we go, fight. third round of this championship fight. And he connects there, DC. Great job landing that punch. Look at the force behind that leg kick. Strike lands there, and somehow his opponent's chin held up. His opponent's chin held up, but you do not want to be on the receiving end of those types of strikes. The biggest shot that he's landed all night. A massive uppercut land. Just misses with a left hook there. Him down. There you go. Oh, he slams his opponent down. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. All right, side control now. St. Pierre's has got full mount now. Lands with the ground and pound. All right, so he's got the body locked down here, DC, or so it appears. This is not a guy you want anywhere near your back. Under three minutes now to go in round three. Well, any time you are in a ground fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. St. Pierre's back in half court. Oh, reversal here, DC. What a way to switch the position. Fantastic movement by the bottom fighter. Pretty good work with the strikes here off of his back by George St. Pierre. All right, a good ground and pound by him here. Certainly staying busy, and not just busy, but effective. You can just throw punches to keep the referee off of you. This guy is throwing punches to be effective, to throw damaging strikes. He's doing a fantastic job. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. The Kimura is not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. But now DC trying to isolate an arm. Yep, he's using the Kimura. And this might just be a matter of time. Oh, there's a the tap. He got the finish, but a beautiful Kimura finish by this great fighter. And I don't care how high your threshold is for pain, when you're in that compromised state, better to tap and fight another guy. It's so crazy because people think the pressure's on your arm. It's all your shoulder. When somebody has a really good Kimura, it feels like they're gonna break your shoulder. That's why you have to tap. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. He was able to get the fight to the ground exactly where he wanted it, 
Eventually, his opponent gave him an opportunity to get a submission. He did that, and he should be very proud of the work he did tonight in the octagon. Well, it's one thing to earn a UFC title. It's another thing to get it done emphatically the way he did tonight. The undisputed UFC welterweight champion, your winner by way of submission. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Bergliana has called a stop to this contest at four minutes, 22 seconds of the third round. To claim the winner by tap out and still. Outstanding performance out of the UFC middleweight champion, George St. Pierre, here tonight. Really hard to find anything that you would quantify as a glaring weakness when you watch